Hey guys, it's Mike Chen and it's just another day in food paradise here in Singapore. One of the things I had to uh, adjust my schedule for is spending about 10 minutes defogging my camera lenses every single morning. Just went for my morning run and trying to plan out my food day today. And today, for the first time in about two weeks, there is no rain. So I figured I'd go down to one of my favorite places in Singapore, Chinatown, and just walk around and see what kind of food we can find. There is a place I've been wanting to try. It's a hawker stall that sells French food. Before we go, the second part of my morning routine and the sponsor of this video, Athletic Rings. Every single morning go for a run hopefully see some monkeys hit to the gym a little workout back here scoop athletic greens add in 8 to 12 ounces of water check it out and drink Also, drop of vitamin D. And that's it, I'm good to go. I told you guys before, what I used to do was that I used to have over a half a dozen bottles of random vitamins and minerals. I would lug them around with me everywhere. It actually takes up a lot of space. And then some vitamins would need replenishing before others. It was just really a mess trying to keep track of everything. And it was really expensive. But with one scoop or one travel pack of Athletic Greens, I'm getting 75 vitamins, minerals, probiotics, which I need. Whole foods sourced superfoods. It's just such a convenient way for me to stay healthy. Like I said, every single morning, this, this, I'm done. Also, AG1 always follows the latest research. They go beyond third-party testing to make sure whatever they're giving you, you're getting the highest quality and the best nutritional daily habits on the planet. In every single box, you get a pack, you get a travel mug, travel packs. Also, vitamin D, I take this every single day. Since taking this, I feel better, I have more energy. I got this for my parents, they love it. I give some travel packs to my friends, now they're taking it. Like I said, I just spent a lot of money on all these different bottles of vitamins. So this is not just convenient, it's a money saver as well. So if you wanna give this a try, go to my link down below. You'll get a year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your order. This is really a game changer for supporting your immune system. AG1 really does provide your body with everything it needs for optimal performance every single day. All right, go take a shower and let's go to Chinatown. Hey guys, Mike Chen for another amazing food day here in Singapore. I am in Chinatown. This is one of my favorite areas to go for food. And today we're starting off with something special if I can find it. I think it's over here. I see a long line. There's a hawker stall that apparently sells restaurant quality French dishes, like Asian fusion French dishes. It actually might be upstairs. There it is, I see it. No line, really. Right here. So on the menu, that duck confit, there's grilled salmon, chicken chop. There's mala spaghetti. This is what I'm going for right here. I haven't been in this hawker center for so long. Oh, this is the place. Al Ram Park fried crates y'all made. Uncle's still at it after all these years. Hopefully the line gets a little shorter, I can snag a plate. I've never seen something like this at a hawker stall before. Dog Kong feet over mashed potatoes and coleslaw with a cup of corn. I had to switch between a couple cameras because my big camera fogs up about every five seconds. But anyway, I do want to issue an apology. I've been in Singapore in a long, long time. I know this is a way to reserve tables. If you see this on a table, you leave it alone. I saw a business car on the table. I forgot that a business car is also a, a seat saver, so I accidentally took someone's seat. Of course, they were sorry, tried to leave, but they insisted and offered a seat to us, so thank you so much. And I'm sorry again. This looks like I'm at a sit-down restaurant. Look at the outside, though. This is definitely some French slash Asian fusion. See all that beautiful chili on the outside? Oh my goodness, that skin is so light and crispy. That little plastic fork, I'm thinking, this can't possibly penetrate the skin and grab the meat. Oh, oh, a little flick from the plastic fork. And that's all it takes for that tender duck meat 
to fall apart. Look at that. The skin, you can already tell, it's just so light and thin. Add some of that brown sauce. Wow, that just put a smile on my face. First of all, that skin, again, just like I thought, so light, melts in your mouth with a subtle little teensy winty crunch. The duck meat is all sorts of tender, falling apart every which way. You don't need to chew that much for that entire bite to render on your tongue. And usually duck confit is red wine sauce. This sauce is a little different. I think it's some sort of brown gravy. And add some of that mashed potato on the bottom. I love this so much. The potato is creamy. I like the coleslaw too because it's not overly sweet. And it goes so well with this duck. I mean, this looks like a dish you would get at a French restaurant for 20, 30 bucks. Here, I think 11 Singapore dollars. Mm. Oh, that skin is just perfect. And on the skin, again, I taste the chilies. I think a little cumin, a little pepper. This is such an elegant meal I just got from a hawker stall. I would highly recommend this. Also, got the knife. Don't really need it. Whole thing. Plastic fork. Meat comes right off. Next dish, this is the chicken chop. I think grilled chicken on the top. Again, with some, looks like sambal. And on the bottom is dry laksa noodles. This is such an interesting dish. Again, $11 for this dish. Mm. Chicken is tender. Oh, definitely taste the chilies. Mm. Oh, that samba on top is delicious. Crispy chilies, a tiny bit of shrimpy flavor. With this dish, I don't know whether the highlights on the chicken with the laksa spaghetti below. Mm. Wow, that laksa is slightly sweet, tons of heat. You get that nice blast of coconut flavor and tons of umami. Mm. There's like two amazing dishes in one. Tender, spicy sambal chicken on top. And delicious laksa spaghetti on the bottom. And a little different about this, laksa noodles are really soft. Usually laksa is not made with spaghetti. Here, the noodles are chewy, it's al dente. The sauce sticks to these noodles really, really well. It's a whole kind of different laksa experience. I love it saved this for last. This is mala spaghetti. So peanuts, mushrooms, tomatoes, shrimp, inside the spaghetti that's just glowing red from all the chilies. Eating, my head is getting sweaty. Take out my hat. It's really good. Not a bad bite of food from this place. Eddie is a food genius. Mm. Super tender shrimp. The spaghetti has a little tanginess from the tomatoes, and now my tongue feels like it's just been tasered. Mm. The mala force is strong within this one. Wow, so spicy, so nummy at the same time. A little bit of refreshing, subtle sweetness from the tomatoes. Nice crunch from the mushrooms. Some bites you'll get another crunch from the peanuts that's in here. Again, spaghetti, perfectly al dente, perfectly cooked. As much as I like the duck confit, this is home. This is where I live, right here. Numbing, spicy, my tongue on fire. Mm. Ah, sip of fresh sugar cane juice. Overall though, Eddie's, I love it. Really good value for the food you're getting. Tastes is phenomenal. The line for the pretail stretches all the way from over there to here. And I already know it's gonna be worth it. Got a plate, only waited half an hour. Great towel with some eggs, sprouts, and just a ton of heart. Oh, smells so good. Oh. There's nothing like this. Chewy noodles, little sweet pop and cockle. And just a ton of wok hair. Oh. 
I think I said last time I'll share, but I hope the next time I come by, this place is still around. Because people have been telling me, how come they wanted to retire for a long, long time? But you never know when this is not gonna be around anymore. I'm so glad I'm able to have it again. I mean, it's just the texture, the flavor, the lingering umami on your tongue. You're taking a bite of Singapore history and an institution. One of my favorite things to eat in this country. Got me a little dessert at mother-in-law egg tart. Their special one has been gone today. It sucks. It's dark chocolate raspberry is out today. That would have been really, really good. I'm sure the rest is good too. Got a couple of the tarts. This is uh I think it's pandan coconut. And the other one is <laughs> I forgot what this one is. I'll let you know soon. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, this is so good. Oh, Earl Grey tea. The L side is just ultra crazy. Crispy custard inside is so soft and velvety. And listen to this. Mm. And right away, I'm gonna blast of that fragrant tea flavor. This is just perfect after a savory meal. The second one I got, again, I think it's panda and coconut with coconut shavings on top. And again, listen to this. It's a little eggy, very coconutty. Again, with that beautiful crunch. And that delicately soft custard in the middle. This is like a very luxurious egg tart. And on the bottom of the custard, there's like a little layer. It's like a little layer of something above the crust. Kind of, it's just like toasted coconuts or caramel or something. Oh yeah, definitely need some tea after this. Let's go get some. I was looking for some matcha. I was craving matcha, and that kind of led to looking around for Japanese cafes and restaurants, and that led to this place, Maman Unagi. What kind of caught my attention was the fact that they give you a little side of fresh wasabi that you grind yourself to eat with your dish. Unfortunately, there's no more fresh wasabi. I never grounded fresh wasabi before. So excited to do that. But since we're here, let's get a Unagi bowl. This looks like an amazing unagi bowl. So all the unagi is fresh from the tank and it's grilled over charcoal right in front of the store. You can see them do it. So I got some unagi and some salmon belly. Wow. Seaweed soup. I need another bite of this. Mm. This is slapped me across the face good. It just feels like when you take a bite, that tender umami filled fish you just whacked me across the face. Hey, why do delicious food make those people's clothes snap off in food wars? I don't know. I can't explain it. I take a bite of this, I feel like it slapped me across the face. The unagi is smoky, like it's a little sweet. You can tell when I'm squeezing this between my chopsticks how deliciously tender and juicy that fish is. You taste all that great flavor from the charcoal. There's not even a little bit of that. That isn't just the most tender thing ever. Now I kind of wish I didn't get half salmon belly. I just got we're not good for the whole thing. The salmon belly is good, but the skin on the salmon belly is a little too hard. Let's just go back to this. Look at that thing just glistening under the light. You'll see the oil and juice pouring out of it. And just by me poking it with the chopstick a little bit, add a bit of wasabi, balance out that fatty, sweet flavor. Yeah, when you come here, just get the wanagi. I mean, the salmon belly is really good too. I wish the skin was more toasty and edible. And that thing also completely melts in your mouth like a slab of butter. There's no denying how good this is. Like you just want more of this. Once you take your first bite, my initial reaction is, I don't have enough in this bowl. And then I start kind of getting mad at the salmon belly for taking up the space that should belong to the unagi. Mm. 
This is one of the best versions of this dish I've ever had. Cleanse your palate with a little pickle. And just dig in again. Yeah, this is definitely a place I will be coming back to time and time again while I'm in Singapore. They still had the fresh wasabi. I think it'd be even better. I was so excited. I saw the pictures of them just giving you a little wasabi, like a little chunk of wasabi. You get your own little grater. You just grater yourself. I was so ready to do it. I've never done that before. I always wanted to. Hopefully, they'll be able to bring it back. But wow, what a place. Try this place out. So happy I came across this. And it all started when I wanted some tea. Once you're done with the fish, take your leftover rice, put it inside the bowl. Broth goes in. Add some chilies. And that is a perfect way to end this delicious meal. Mmm. Let me some peppercorn in there too. Alright, finish this and then let's go walk around for a long, long time. Back at Chinatown again at night, all these stalls are open, they're selling so many things. I see giant buns, hot pot, this place sells Sion food. Now this is a lively night market. A lot of these places are Sichuan, hot pot, mala places. Let's pick up a few buns. So this place has uh, five spice flour rolls, mantel, giant buns. They ran out of the wajin, which I haven't seen a five spice wajin in such a long time. Got a couple buns though. Let's go find some things to dip these buns in. Oh wow, look at this place sells a Liang Pi Tudo Bin Jiu Cai Hezi. Okay. Oh, here they got Da Bin. Look at that. Onion Jiu Cai. Xiang Xiang Bin Sauce Pancake. Never had a sauce pancake before. Here is uh, crawfish, stinky tofu. Whoa, this is all. Spicy chicken. Oh, this looks delicious. This is the best right here. Spicy and sour right here. Got some pig's feet, some the sour pickle pig's feet. And this place, it sells tons of dough. They have my five spice flour dough, but all right, I think I gotta just go find something else. Maybe something soupy to kind of eat this with. I don't think I've ever been around the street before. There's so much food. There's another place that sells Xi'an noodles and pretty good looking Xi'an food. Let's try this place. Tons of food and tons of great value. Um, I got two noodle dishes. First is a spicy and sour clear noodle dish. Second is a biang biang noodle. They're each four Singapore dollars, so about three bucks for a bowl of noodles. In addition to that, got a basket of chicken feet. Excited to dig into this as well. So the protein is going to be my chicken feet and my pork bun and beef bun. Ooh, oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Spicy, sour. Wow, it's got really good flavor. Mix the biao biao noodle up. I'm kind of happy it's not a giant bowl of biao biao noodles. But I'm dealing with a lot of carbs tonight. Super bouncy with crunchy vegetables. We taste that fried oil that makes this dish so fragrant. It's vinegary, it's spicy. I love it. Chase it all down. Chicken feet. Mm. Wow. This chicken feet is supposed to be very pickled, very sour, very spicy. It's definitely all those things. Many people like the dim sum version of the chicken feet, the stewed one, which is great. I think these kinds are way better. And check out the giant bun I got for a dollar. This is huge. Look at this. Can you still see me? Mm. Whoa. Look how stuffed this giant bun is. This is the beef bun. First of all, it's delicious. All that juice being soaked up by that delicious airy bun itself. I taste some star anise, some five spice. The inside is so juicy. Look at that. Look at the juice from all that delicious meat. That filling is heavy. This bun is about a pound. A pound of food for a dollar. You eat this, you're typically full. This will fill you up and put you to sleep. I'm gonna give this a nice dunk and my spicy and sour noodle soup. Oh yeah. 
This is so good too. The star anise, the fire spice, there's so much flavor in here. And I love dunking Bowser into a delicious broth. And this thing, it's sour, it's spicy, it's perfect for dunking. Oh, this is getting really messy here. Oh my goodness, this is good. Mm, the bun is broken open, so you can get a sense of how big the filling is. Take a bite of bun. A sip of noodle, another bite of bun. Chase that with a pickled chicken feet. This might be one of my favorite streets to eat in Singapore just because there's so many different selections of food. And there's tons of the flavors I love all in this one street. So you can pick and choose a bunch of different things, different appetizers, different main dishes, find a table and just chow it all down together. Still one more giant bun to try. The pork giant bun. Well, this is still piping hot. Mm. Pork and celery. Pork buns are usually better because this pork is juicier. And this is good, but wow. And this is good because celery pork buns are always amazing. But the value of that beef bun is extraordinary. The filling is so heavy. I'm gonna dunk the pork one in the spicy broth as well. Yeah, this is delicious. But I'm definitely coming back for that beef bun. A dollar and the filling is basically as big as the bun itself. And the bam bam noodles go so well with the chicken feet. Still can't believe what a deal this is. About three US dollars. And on a typical night, a bowl of this, one giant beef bun, you're good to go. The only bad thing about eating here it's so hot. I'm wearing a hat, so sweat is again in my eyes. It's so hot here, and I'm devouring stuff that really should be eaten in the Arctic. But as sweaty as I am, and as hot as I feel inside, it is so much fun. Really awesome food day. Got to visit some places that I really loved last time around. Got to try some new food places. Always love it here in Singapore. And also, guys, I've been filming a lot of short videos, little clips that goes on my shorts channel. A lot of exclusive, a lot of early content. You can check out. I'll put the link down below. Please give it a follow. I will appreciate it very, very much. And as always, all the places I went to, listen down below for you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.